Welcome back to another DAX through Power BI tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to dynamically set a relationship in your Power BI model. Uh, this kind of builds off an earlier video that I did on the use relationship function in DAX, um, but this uses the use relationship to be able to uh, dictate which table you want to select data from and which table you want to use as a slicer. So this is kind of a good example here. I have multiple tables. I'll just show you how this is set up. Um, I have a superheroes table with five superheroes in it. I have a villains table with five villains in it. And then I have this fans table, which is basically my fact table. It has the name of the superhero or villain, the date, and the number of fans they gained for that day. Just looking at that fans table, this is what that looks like. So Batman gained five fans on March 1st, 2018. It's kind of how that works. Uh, now taking you to a normal bar chart, you see how many fans each gained. Without any slicer selections, this graph seems to work, but the moment you click on, let's say, Captain America, you see Captain America's data, you can't then click on a villain. That will totally mess up the graph, and that's because um, the data is coming from two different tables and it's not working correctly. So I'm gonna show you how to use the use relationship function to be able to select which table that you wanna use as the relationship for your bar chart in this case. Um, so when this is set up, we can click on superhero and it will show basically the selections you have from the superhero table. It's really cool once we get it all set up. So I've already included another table that is not connected to anything and it's basically a selection table. And that just has a couple of words, superhero or villain, which is what shows up in the slicer. So let's go ahead and get rid of our slicer selection so it comes back. Um, also, one thing, one problem with um, this report is you see these blanks here. Um, basically, these show up because of the relationships that we have. If we try to get rid of those blanks by selecting all and then getting rid of blank, um, that works for the first one, but the moment we try to filter uh, out the blanks from the villains, we get a problem with our chart. So that looks pretty bad. So the way we're gonna wanna do this is we're gonna wanna take these active relationships and make them inactive. Uh, sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it works perfectly. So if we go ahead and make both these relationships inactive, we now have this same bar chart that comes up even after we filtered out the blanks, but clicking on it will do nothing to the graph because it's not an active relationship. And then the only other step we have to do is we need to create a measure for the fans gained. Right now it's coming straight from a column. Let's go ahead and add a measure. We'll call this fans gained measure. And we'll set this equal to, uh, we're gonna use a variable to get the slicer selection from the selection table, either superhero or villain. The way we do that is typing in var. Um, we'll call this selected equals and we'll use first non-blank. That's a good way to get a slicer selection. First non-blank of the selection table, selection column. First non-blank takes two parameters. So the second one, if you just put, type in comma one, it'll work. Um, and since we used a variable, we're gonna need the return keyword. And everything in the return is what the measure is actually gonna return. So uh, basically, we're just gonna wanna return the fans gained given um, the relationship that we've selected. So we're going to say if uh, selected equals our first choice, which is going to be uh, superhero. So let's come back up here. If selected equals superhero, then we want to um, return a calculate function. Uh, we're gonna ret want to return the sum of the fans gained uh, given a certain uh, a certain relationship. And the way we're gonna specify that is by using use relationship. So this takes it an inactive relationship and we'll use it in our calculation just in this one instance. So we're going to want to use the relationship between superhero's name and fans name. Let's close out the calculate function and we will go ahead and copy that because under it is going to be the condition for when the if uh, selected equals superhero is not met. So 
when it's not superhero, which means it's villain in this case, we will paste in another calculate function, still summing fans gain, but we're going to use the use relationship villains, villains name, fans name. So basically, if we had selected superhero in our slicer, use the relationship for superheroes. If um, villains is selected, use the relationship for the villains table. So let's close that off, click enter, and let's come back to, uh, to this graph here, and we will get rid of fans gained, the column, and we'll throw in the measure instead. So now uh, we have superhero selected, and we have Iron Man selected, and you see that Iron Man shows up in the graph. But as we select more, uh, more superheroes, we can see that Iron Man, Spider-Man, Superman now show up. But you see that Darth Vader is already selected over here, and nothing is being done with these villain selections. That's because we are on the superhero tab. If we click to uh, click over to villain, we now see Darth Vader, Magneto, and Sauron. So we can totally specify which table we want to pull data from, which table that we want our slicer selections to affect our chart. It's actually a really handy way that we can just switch between different tables of data. There are a couple of other ways you can get around this. Obviously, we can just have one table that has superheroes and villains, but in case you want to keep those tables separate, uh, this is a really cool way to do it. Just a little recap, we have two uh, inactive relationships between the villains to the fans and the superheroes to fans, and this selection table is totally, um, totally separated from any other table. And the only way that it's interacting is through this measure, let's make that a little bit bigger, uh, through this measure where we're taking the slicer selection and just doing an if statement on that slicer selection, and then using the use relationship function to specify which table that we are actually um, going to use for the chart data. So it's a really cool way that we can um, be able to use multiple tables here and um, be able to switch between those two. Awesome, so if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next DAX for Power BI video.